Good morning. It's February 1st, 2021. And, uh, you know, life is life. And I'm just going to come on here with a short video. I'd be thinking about um, today the conviction of the Holy Spirit and how, as Christians or people of God, I'll use that terminology because the word Christian. Uh, to me right now means nothing and uh, because if you're not trying to live so-called Christ-like it means nothing we're, so we're the children of God uh, our Father and please don't take that out of context if you don't like what I said it's okay this is what I'm talking about for me but we uh, don't have any convictions you know I've been uh, you know I, I, I go through a lot in my life and I've been through a lot in my life and I think about the conviction of the Holy Ghost. If you're saved and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, where's the conviction at? Where's the conviction when you're living foul and living wrong? Where's the conviction? See, we made up in our own minds to do what we want to do outside of the will of God. We don't really care about the will of God. We just care about what we want and we make God, or we try to make God flex and bend to our desires our mindset, our wants. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. If you're following something and you believe in something, you follow uh, what they mandated, what's been put out. The Bible is a basic instruction for, for leaving earth. And yeah, we all don't, we all fall short somewhere along the line, but you know, we're supposed to get these things together and get lined up and do what's right. But I find now, you know, through all the stuff, I've been living this life 58 years. And I find out that most people don't want to live for God. They want to do what they want to do. Uh, and it's sad. That's why you wonder why people call the church the hypocrites. Because a lot of times, that's what you see. A lot of hypocrites in the church. Some of y'all may not agree with that. It doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. This is my opinion. It's what I see. It's what I know from facts. But there's a lot of people that sit there and dressed up looking good, but yet... They're, they have no love for you. Um, and the best thing to find out, you strike somebody wrong and see what happens. Uh, even a, even a, 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 a saved person can get out of pocket sometimes. Uh, but they know how to repent. They know what repentance is. They know what conviction is. And people that do what they want to do outside of the will of God and they think, oh, they're okay with God. You know, you, you know, that's foolishness. You're a fool to think that way. That's foolish thinking. That's the enemy's thinking. To have you think, oh my God, I can do whatever I want to do and God will love me because because it's, that's who he is, the loving God. That's not, it's not factual, man. That's not factual. There's nothing factual about that. There's no truth in that. That's why I believe so many people in the church are in trouble today. That's why so many people are going to hell today out of the church. Because of racist thoughts, anger, unforgiveness, meanness. Don't want to change. Just, just, I don't want to change. I want to be. I'm. I want to be the same. And God is about changing us. He's about changing our hearts. Our Father's about changing us from the, who we are, the fleshy person, into a spiritual person. When His Bible says, "Press to the mark of the high calling," that's not somebody just looking at something like a cross and just trying to press your way through a crowd. It's about purifying and changing as you go, to love people for who they are and where they're at, no matter what color, skin. They are. But where's the conviction when we just do foolish stuff over and over and over and over? But yet we want to profess something that we're not. If you're not living a Christian life or a, 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 a child of God life, you're not a child of God, period. I don't care what you put on it. I don't care if you got 30 Bibles in your house. That means nothing. It's like a boxer. You want to be a boxer. You got boxing gloves, but you never go work out. You never go to the ring to, to, to learn how to practice and get better. You're not a boxer. You're just somebody who owns boxing gloves. That's all that is. You own nothing. That's it. So either you're a child of God or you're a child of this world. And if you're a child of this world, you can't love God. You cannot love God. You love the things of this world. You don't love Christ. And if you don't obey God, don't think that you're a child of God. You cannot be. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Hello, somebody. 
How long you got to go down the same dark road? How long are you going to be blinded by the things of this world? How long are you going to be blinded by your selfish, ignorant desires? The book that James says we're, 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 we're consumed by our own lusts and desires. So our own lusts and desires can overpower everything. When are we going to get it right? When are we going to do what God told us to do and not what we tell ourselves to do and try to make God conform to us? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I've always been a guy that, that believes in truth. I've always been a guy that believes in, 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 in saying what's on your heart and mind. And I used to say it the wrong way. I say it now in a different way because I have better understanding. You're going to die. Listen, everybody. You're going to die. Today, tomorrow, next week, tonight, one day, you're dying. And you're going against the, th the total thing against the will of God. You're totally selling yourself out and go against the will of God. You're totally sold yourself to be a slave of the enemy, Satan himself. Satan himself. And Satan's looking at you, laughing at you, and saying, look, I got another sucker on the line. I got another fool on the line. They're not who they say they are. Everybody messes up. But how long are you going to stay on the same road of darkness? The road is wide, but the way is narrow. Should I say that again? That's a Bible. That's Bible. The road is wide, but the way is narrow. When are you going to get on the narrow road and do the right things for the right reasons? You can't use cheap grace. You can't go, oh, Lord, forgive me if I confess my sin. He's faithful and just. He is. That there's repentance behind it and some truth behind what you're doing. Not to get over. He knows you're not your heart is, when your heart is right when it's not right. Come on, somebody. He knows it. But you're living outside the will of God. You can't win. You're a loser already. There's no victory in leaving God. There's no victory in, in, in doing whatever you want to do and say that you're a child of God. There's no victory in that. There's only victory in Jesus. And you got to align yourself to the word of God. The basic instruction for leaving us. How hard is that for us to do? Yeah, we were against the flesh. I understand that. But if your mind is so carnal that you cannot come to God, you need to go get some help instead of sitting back in your glass house thinking that everything is all right when it's not all right. I'm talking to myself too. I have to examine myself. The Bible says examine yourself and see whether we're the household of God or not. Are you a part of the child of are you a child of God? Or are you a child of Satan? You're either one or the other. There's no there's no one leg over the fence and the other in, 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 inside of the kingdom. There's no way. You cannot teeter totter. Hello, somebody. Especially if you've been in this walk for a long time, you know better. And let me say it again. The scripture says, know to do good, but do wrong is a sin. You're living in a constant state of sin. Because there's no repentance. Where is your repentance? Where is it? I'm tired, folks. I'm tired. I've been tired a long time. But I'm tired of people professing one thing and living totally outside of it. Totally outside of it. You're allowing your pride, your selfishness, to get in the way of the things of God because you want to do what you want to do and you want God to conform to your ways. God said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is not going to change for you to fit your mold, to make you happy. This is about serving the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace. It's about serving Him, not yourself. So how hard is it for us to not get ourselves lined up because we want to satisfy this flesh versus the Spirit? We want to give Satan rule over our lives to do what we want to do. And yet we want to call on God. And then we die in our casket. We want somebody to give us a eulogy that we're going to heaven. When you know that you're already going the way to hell. Because you didn't have time to repent and get your life back with God. What's wrong with us people? What's wrong with us people? People dying all around you. And you think that you're not going to die. Stop living your life as a lie. And start living the truth. Not your truth, but God's truth. Come on, somebody. 
Come on, somebody. This, I'm, 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 I'm broken in my heart for all the things I'm seeing. And I told y'all in my other video that, yeah, I've been through some changes in the last two, two, over two and a half years. I've been through some trials and tribulations. I fell off the map, but by the grace of God, I got back on. Get back on track. Get back on the narrow way and stop looking at the broad way, thinking that God is going to conform to your ways because he's not going to do it. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows everything about you. Not one hair from your head will not fall because he's been numbered. Hello, somebody. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you better get yourself right with God. Stop thinking about who you are. Stop thinking about, oh, I, I, got, I got all this going on. You ain't got nothing going on because when you die again, you will meet either him in heaven or you're going to meet your, uh, your, your devil that you're serving in hell. You're either a slave to one or a slave to another. Either you're a child of God or you're a child of Satan. You're making these choices out here. They're choices that we all make. Either they're going to give us life or they're going to give us death. Which ones do you want? Most of y'all, a lot of y'all are going to choose death. Because you're going to say, well, well, uh, brother, you, you can't judge us. I'm not going to judge you. The word judges you. Either you're a child of the Most High or you're a child of the Satan. A child of Satan. And let me tell y'all something. Somebody said something the other day about it's okay to just date. Let me tell y'all something. Dating leads to all kinds of stuff. When you like somebody, you start hanging with that person, then you begin living in sin. Don't think it's not going to happen because it always happens when you like somebody. Eventually, you're going to give up yourself. And you young ladies, don't give yourself up to nobody. If you ain't putting a ring on it, don't give yourself to nobody. And I am going to hit on marriage one time. You married people or you people who are who are or, 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 or going through some trials and tribulations and you separate and you divorce for no reason, you think that you're okay? God is not pleased with that. What God put together, let no man pull asunder. Listen, you got married in the spirit realm and you're still married in the spirit realm, not from a piece of paper. God hates divorce. Do you not understand that means? He hates divorce. He didn't say, oh, well, you know, it's okay. No, he said, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. If God hates it and there's no reason for it, why are you allowing it to happen? Is Satan got your mind so messed up that you're willing to walk in the pits of hell? Come on, somebody. Many people have went on and got remarried. I feel sorry for those people. A lot of them should have never been remarried because now they're married to an adulterer and they're adulterer. And now you think that the Bible's clear on, in, in Revelations. All adulterers, liars, fornicators, homosexuals have their things like, like a fire. Come on, somebody. Now let's get off that subject because I talked to Blue about that yesterday in my other video. But I'm trying to make a point here. Either you choose life or you choose death. Either you're going to die and go to heaven or you're going to die and go to hell. What is your choice? Don't let your flesh override what the, the, what the word says. Don't let your flesh override your victory to heaven because there's no victory in hell. We've been in gashing of teeth. We've been in gashing of teeth. Come on, somebody. This is real. Where are you at in this? Stop loving people. Stop doing what you're supposed to do. Stop having this racist views about black and white and Chinese and Puerto Rican and all that. Stop having those racist views. Because God is not a racist God. You husbands, love your wives as you ought to. As Christ loved the church. Wives, respect your husbands. Children, obey your parents. Time is running out and we're playing like there's no big deal. Stop being foolish. Stop it. Again, I said something about, my, about me almost dying with this coronavirus. Wake up, people. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Your time is coming. The
the number of your date is coming. You were born in 1975, but there's a dash between the line and you have an end date, but you don't know the end date because you want to live and think that you have eternal life on this earth. There's nothing eternal here. Were you laying up your treasures either in heaven or are you laying them on earth? Are you witnessing to somebody? And I mean laying them in somebody's bed, living foul, talking about you a child of God. That happened in my own life years ago. Years ago, somebody was trying to quote scripture and want to live in the bed. I don't get that. Back then I was ignorant, I didn't understand it. But now that I understand it, that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Stop living foul people. Stop living for yourself and start living for the guy that you claim that you're serving. Stop going to the club and drinking and partying. Stop laying and sleeping in people's houses. You ain't got no business being here. Stop it. Stop being a whoremonger, because that's what that is. Stop it. Your life, again, is in God's very hand. All you got to do is say, shut it down, and it's down. Stop being a fool for this world. Stop being a fool for this flesh. Get in your word. Read your word. Get strong. Find some good fellowship. Real good fellowship. And get your life back to God. This is Come On Somebody Now Ministries. By Brother Paul. I pray for everybody. My family members. I pray for everybody. Because my life too can be stuffed out tonight, today. I can leave this van and go down to work to my work and somebody just kill me. But I want to be on the Lord's side. I'm going to say it one more time before I get off this video. The road is wide, but the way is narrow. If you know that you're wrong and you know that you ain't right with God and you got to get some things right in your life, repentance in your life, do it. Do it now. Don't wait before it's over. Do it now. Don't wait before it's over. Do it now. This is an urgent message. Look around the world, the rumors of wars. Come on, somebody. We're in the beginning of sorrows. You think it's going to get better? It's not going to get better. Choose life today and not death. Be blessed. And Father, we just thank you right now today for those who are listening to your word, listening to me in my heart, and the compassion, the passionateness I have for people being saved, getting their lives together. If your heart is broken and you've been through a lot and you need mending, go to Jesus. Get some good fellowship with good people that love you. Men, cater to the men. Women, cater to the women and work this out. Pray and ask God to give you strength and give you healing in your heart to work to together for the betterment of God. God our Father. Father, Father, Father. And I ask all these blessings in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.